first, I want to take a moment to remind everybody that I am sponsored by G Fuel Energy. I do have my own code. Use code READ, R-E-I-D, on gfuel.com for any and all G Fuel-related purchases. If you guys want to get cracked like me in Warzone, this is the way to do it. This is what I do. Yo, what's going on, YouTube? Today, I have for you some launch day settings for Call of Duty Vanguard, the new Call of Duty that just came out November 5th. I got to get my hands on the game a couple hours early, so I was able to go through these settings for you guys, and these are what you're going to want to do change your settings to as soon as you boot up the game. Some of these, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of settings. Some of these are a lot of personal preference. There's a lot of settings that you need to be turning either on or off that not a lot of people are aware of. So I'm gonna go through all of these, every single setting, and tell you guys at least what I'm running if you guys wanna get an idea of what the number one console player in Warzone is running in Call of Duty Vanguard. So without any further ado, let's get started on this. Uh, target aim assist, when I play multiplayer games, I actually do have aim assist turned on. I just use default, regular aim assist, ADS aim assist turned on. Weapon mount activation, this one's kind of personal preference. I've seen a bunch of different people with different settings. I do it where ADS is when you melee. Uh, and then I want to be able to, if I like back up, if I move my thumbstick back, I want to be able to back off the uh, mount. And I want that to be on a pretty short time, not too short, to where if I accidentally touch my thumbstick, I get off it. Just, just going to go with short on that one. Uh, when my ammo hits zero, I want it to swap, swap guns automatically. It just takes a you know a half millisecond off of things, maybe makes things faster when you're fighting somebody else. Blind fire, I want that on. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be for some challenges or something like that, but it doesn't hurt to have this on. Automatic airborne mantle. Now, this is one of the most frustrating ways for me to die in other Call of Duty games and in Warzone when I accidentally mantle on something that I'm not trying to mantle onto. So what I do is I turn automatic airborne mantle off instantly. Don't I don't ever want to, if I'm in the sky falling somewhere, I do not want to accidentally grab onto the nearest ledge or something like that. So I turn that off. Grounded mantle, I have that on. If I'm on the ground and I jump, yes, that's usually, if I'm next to a wall, I usually want to jump over it. And then automatic ground mantle is if you're sprinting and you run up to a wall, it'll automatically throw you over that wall, whether you want to or not. So I turn that one off. Uh, mantle stance queuing. This is a new setting. I'm, I think this means that if you are crouched and you mantle over a wall, you stay crouched. Uh, if you're standing and you mantle over a wall, you stay standing. I kind of like the sound of that, so I kept that on. Automatic sprint. Now, this is one I'm not 100% sure what the best setting is. This isn't Warzone where you have 250 health and movement plays a bigger role. This is Call of Duty multiplayer. multiplayer. You have 100 health. You die super duper fast in this. I don't know if automatic tactical sprint is worth it or not. I don't think automatic sprint is what you want. Definitely don't think you want to be running that. Uh, either automatic tactical sprint, ATS, or off for you. I'm going to go with it off, I think, and we'll see how that goes. Just because in the beta, the movement felt really weird with auto attack sprint. I didn't like it. I didn't even like auto attack sprint in Modern Warfare multiplayer either. But if you are trying to save your controller from pressing down on your thumbstick twice, I definitely do recommend you try this out. Auto move forward. Uh, I don't like this one. This just means that you accent, like you accidentally keep moving forward if you stop pressing your thumbstick. Uh, good for if you're going AFK and you want to not get kicked and you just want to walk forward. But other than that, I don't see a real use for this. Sprint cancels reload. I like this. Sometimes I cancel my reloads by pressing Y twice. Triangle on PlayStation. Uh, sometimes I cancel it by sprinting. Uh, sprinting DoorDash. Yeah, when I'm sprinting up to a door, I want to bust through it. Slide tap to slide. This allows you to, to slide faster. Um, sometimes you might slide on accident, but that's very rarely a negative thing. Whereas if you hold it, it can take you too long to slide and it can just like make your reaction time take longer. So definitely tap to slide. Uh, sprint behavior toggle. I'm trying this one out. I'm not sure if this is the moves or not. Toggle or hold on this one. This is one of those personal preferences. So basically if I press sprint, it'll just keep sprinting until I press it again. Whereas this one, you have to keep holding it. I'm kind of kind of trying to do this one to somewhat save the controller since I don't have auto tactical sprint on. This this setting combined with auto tactical sprint uh, are like, they kind of go hand in hand. I'm not sure what combo of these is the best. Uh, try them out a little bit for yourself. See what you like the most there. Uh, aim down sign behavior. Same as in all Call of Duties. I want to hold it. Uh, equipment behavior, same thing. want to hold it. I don't really want to toggle a grenade. Steady aim behavior, same thing. Automatic, automatic weapon fire, same thing. want to hold it. Uh, there's another one. The, none of these options are necessarily bad. Um, I think uh, prioritize reload is the best. That way, if I'm standing in a group of things, I, ideally, I don't really ever want to hold square to have to pick stuff up. Uh, I just pick stuff up or reload. I would like to tap it. That makes things way better. Um, 
and prioritize reload so you never accidentally drop your gun while trying to reload. That's the one I'm going to go with. Again, you can try these out, see if you like something, read the descriptions for yourself, see if one of these sounds better to you. Scoreboard behavior, just toggle it. Uh, controller settings. So this is, again, this is a lot of personal preference right here. No copying somebody's settings is not going to make you super crazy good at the game. It honestly might be able to make, might possibly make you worse, but this is all uh, up to you. Uh, I personally have played since a long time, since World War II, since Call of Duty World War II came out. I've played on seven horizontal, five vertical. I like it. I don't want to change it. Um, do I necessarily recommend a different vertical stick sensitivity than your horizontal? Not, not, it's not like it's a bad thing. It helps me shoot people off of head glitches better, helps me get headshots better, helps me not get hit markers with a sniper. But if somebody's above me or somebody's below me, it's a really difficult fight. It takes forever to look up. It takes forever to look down. It's trade-offs. Trade-offs. It's if you think that's worth it, that that's worth it as a trade-off. Go ahead. Otherwise, just keep the same number for both. Ground vehicle and air vehicle sensitivity multiplier. I don't really see a reason for these to be any higher or lower, so I just kept them at one. Uh, ADS sensitivity multiplier. Originally, I turned this to 0.8, which is what it is in Warzone. But then I saw the custom settings for each zoom level. There's a lot here. I I really don't think that there should be this many settings, but. I turned that on and I tried to copy my war zone settings. 0.8 for a low zoom, which is like a red dot sight or iron sights. 0.9 for anything higher than that. Except I don't know, I don't know where the cutoff should be for 0.8 to 0.9. I'm thinking a four times should possibly be 0.8. Anything up to the four times should kind of match your low zoom, and then anything five times or higher should match what your high zoom was in war zone. So essentially five to High zoom is 0.9, and 4 to low zoom is 0.8. That's what we're going to go with. We're going to try that. Again, these, there's a lot of settings here. I think it kind of confuses a lot of people, but that's what I think the best breakdown of that is. Uh, bumper Jumper Tactical, I've played on this ever since Black Ops 3, since I learned about it. It makes it so you don't have to. Ideally, you never want to take your thumb off your right thumbstick when you're playing. Um, so this allows me to both jump and drop shot without ever having to move my thumb. Uh, saves you a lot of money if you don't want to get a fancy ass controller. I do have a fancy controller that has buttons in the back, but they're not too super useful. I use them to throw a stun or to melee, which is not something I do too often. Uh, vertical aim, I have these all set to standard instead of inverted. This is just kind of how some people's brain works. Most people play standard. Uh, there are some people who like it better on inverted. Uh, aim response curve type, changing these is not going to, none of these is better than the other. This is literally how your brain responds to mo you moving your thumbstick. If you want to Google, you want to Google image search these and see like this is literally how your thumbs, how your controller, your character in game responds to you moving your thumbstick on the controller. Uh, it's a little little sciency behind it. I just like the way linear feels. It's not one better than the other. It's literally just comes down to which one you prefer, which one feels better to you. I play with controller vibration on. Almost nobody anywhere does. I'm fucking weird. Don't mind me. Um, uh, most people turn this off though. Uh, weapon fire threshold. I see no reason for this to be on. I do. Again, I have a fancy controller, so my controller just gets clicked in. But my controller just gets clicked in without having to press too much. So I have a fancy controller, so there's no reason for me to have this on. If you want more of a, a different feel, you could turn it on. I don't really see any reason why it needs to be on though. Uh, again, this is where we're getting to some unnecessary seeming settings. Uh, that I don't see why anybody would use. I kind of just want most of these to be on like the default or other Call of Duty games. ADS sensitivity transition timing. I think instant. This is what the default setting was on. So I think this is what it was in other Call of Duties. Not entirely too sure. I'm going to go with this though. Uh, ADS sensitivity multiplier while you're steady aim, which means you're holding breath. Um, I don't think I want this to combo with the other sensitivity multipliers. So I'm just going to leave this at one. Um, if you, I, I don't know, I think, I think having a different setting in this game and then going back to Warzone or a different Call of Duty game can mess you up between the two, so I'm trying to, like, copy this to other games. Stick layout, default, controller orientation, up, ADS stick swap, off, I don't want that on. L2 minimum, L2 and R2 minimum dead zones, uh, again, I have the smart fancy trigger, so I don't need to, uh, change this at all. If I just touch my controller, it counts it all the way in. Uh, your dead zones. These are basically your dead zones. Um, the minimum input is what your dead zone would be at in Warzone. So I, I play on a .03 in Warzone, so I want it to be down to a 3. <clears throat> in Vanguard, uh, left stick, I just went to a 5. I feel like that's a standard value. Uh, if you move it too low, your character will move on his own. 
So I don't really, your left thumbstick does not need to be anywhere near as precise as your right thumbstick. Your movement thumbstick doesn't need to be super precise as you aiming. So you can turn this one higher if you need to, if, you're, if your character like moves on his own, that's no big deal. Uh, maximums, I want them, I want the full range of motion, so I have them both set to 99. That's on to control. That's done with controller settings. Now we are on to graphics, safe area. You want this, this specific to your monitor, want it all the way. Brightness, I'm on 60 right now. Um, I haven't actually played the game outside of the beta to see what the lighting looks like, but I think the uh, 60 is pretty decent. That's what I played in the, in the uh, again, in the beta. Color customization, these are just personal preferences, what you want your colors to look like. I went and just turned filter 3 on. I kind of want my, I want enemies to be red. That was my big thing, was I just wanted one where there's red for bad guys. Uh, color filter target, so this is either what it looks like in-game or what it looks like in the menu. Both, I want to set to both. Uh, I went with the default color palette. A lot of options here. What again? Set it to whatever colors you want bad guys, good guys to be too. Um, I have myself at the default. I have my teammates uh, as blue. I have my party people, like friends that I'm playing with in party, are going to be like this green color, and then enemies as red as it gets. That's what I wanted that one set to. Field of view. Again, personal preference. If you do not understand. Why I play on 80, I am not going to be the one to explain it to you. All I can tell you is that putting it up to 120 is not necessarily the best setting. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm sorry. I am actually uh, unaware of the difference between these two since I play at 80 and it's just the same either way. Uh, so you're going to have to ask anybody else if you change your FOV, what your ADS field of view is supposed to be. Uh, camera movement, I went with just default. Motion blurs, turn these off. Get rid of them. You don't want them. Depth of field, it makes some things out of focus unnecessarily. You don't want that. Get rid of that. Fidelity FX CAS. Not a clue what that means. Nah, that sounds like some nerd stuff right there. Uh, sharpness of scene rendering is enhanced. Sounds like something you might want on, but I don't know. I'm going to ask some people around before I change that one. So definitely uh, ask somebody else about that one also. On-demand texture streaming. If you have good internet, I definitely re recommend turning this on. Texture, cache size, I turn it all the way to large. This is the only game I play. This is the only thing I need storage for. And I have a really high speed internet, so that's uh, that's that's again that's on you. That's whatever your internet is capable of. Audio master volume seventy. I'm thinking this might even be a little high. I'm thinking I might want to turn this down to sixty at some point. Again, I said this in my in my Warzone settings video. It ain't worth going deaf over hearing footsteps in a video game. So don't have this too loud. There's no reason to be that little cringy weirdo that hears every footstep and breath breath around the map. So music volume. Most people just turn this completely off. Uh, I, have it down, I have it down to 5, so it's not completely dead silent when I'm in the menus. You basically can't hear it. But you don't want music on distracting you from hearing sounds in the game. Uh, dialogue and sound effects. I've got these set up to 100 with hit markers set to 65. I don't want my hit markers to be too loud that I can't hear anything else. Um, I'm pretty sure sound effects are footsteps. That's what I've heard multiple times now. I'm not 100% sure if that's true. Uh, actually, this is a dialogue. Now that I think about it, dialogue is the announcer in-game. And we know from the beta, I know I'm backtracking, I'm sorry, I'm a terrible YouTuber. Uh, we know from the beta this guy was yelling pretty loudly, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to 70, since unfortunately I can't go to 69, it won't let me. Uh, hit marker sound effects, personal preference, I like the way classic sounds. Audio mix, I'm using headphones, you change that to whatever you play. Killstreak music, no reason to have this on, but I just kind of, if I win a flame suit, kind of want it to be on, why not? Mono audio, you don't want that on. Voice chat, I like to have voice chat on. Adjust these specific volumes to what you want. And then I like the MW2 style comms. I like it to sound like I'm playing Mono Warfare 2 and I'm 10 years old again because that's where the passion started, you know? And then interface, these are all personal preferences to however you want things. And I'll go through these and show you guys all my settings, but got to have the profanity filter on because a lot of people are weirdos nowadays. And then these numbers in the top left. Again, I am not on a PC. I'm playing this game on a PS5. These are all new settings that are now available on console <clears throat> for you to use. I don't see any reason why not have them shown. Um, I, I don't see why you wouldn't want to. Server latency is the big one. I would definitely have that shown so you can see what your ping is, so you can know if you're on like a bad a bad server you can back out of or something like that. Uh, I don't really see a reason to have a clock on. I don't need to know what time it is. Um, and then, oh, the, the, I think this is the last important setting. Turn crosshair bobbing off. I don't really think you want your crosshair like moving all over the place while you're shooting. You just kind of want it to stay center on your screen. I think that makes most sense. It makes it uh, <clears throat> easier to be accurate. Um, and then account and network. I think that's where the personal stuff gets into. 
But all right, I think that is going to wrap up the Vanguard settings video. Again, I'm level one, so I might come up with an updated settings video in the near future if I change anything. But as of launch day, these are probably the best settings that I'm going to recommend you go with. Um, if you want to copy my settings, uh, again, they do not necessarily make you better if you copy somebody else's settings. So keep that in mind. I'm I, I may be the best Warzone player on console, but that doesn't necessarily carry over to Vanguard. But other than that, if you guys um, comment, uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments what kind of settings uh, you guys are running. If you if you don't necessarily agree with some of my settings, let me know uh, what uh, ADS sensitivity you guys are rocking, since there's a lot of options for that. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy Vanguard. If you are interested in watching me grind, there is I will be live every waking hour of the day over at twitch.tv slash readboy, so be sure to check that out. Um, and be, to, be sure to subscribe. I'm a terrible YouTuber, you already know. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more Vanguard and Warzone content on the channel. Thank you, guys. You guys have a good one. Reboys out.